You don't want to skip ahead on this one, baby. Trust me, you're going to want to know the tea with this one, okay? I finally got a new mic and it is not passing the fashion check. So we are just going to hold it. Okay, so do not judge my little mic. Welcome, darling, to this Capricorn full moon happening on July 3rd, 2023. This is such an exciting, big full moon. There's so much to talk about. Also, uh, really quick, let me just say this. This is not your typical Capricorn full moon, and I know I say that a lot, but there's just been some really extraordinary things happening around these moon events lately that, you know, you just got to talk about. You just got to talk talk about it. Oh, there's just so much going on. <laughs> there's so much going on. Welcome to this Capricorn full moon video. As always, you want to watch the first part of this video. You do not want to just skip right to your rising sign with this one because the rising sign horoscopes are very brief because I just got done filming the whole July monthly horoscopes for each rising sign and I'm going over all of the good stuff about this full moon in the beginning. So that is why you do not want to skip ahead. We have a lot of really huge things happening right around this full moon that are going to shake things up can also bring in a lot of breakthroughs a lot of spiciness a lot of excitement a lot of risk and impulsivity but it can also bring in some challenging situations some unexpected or surprising situations especially involving your love life relationships you know the romantic department so you do not want to uh, miss out on the tea for this full moon darling so let's go ahead and get into this capricorn full moon so this full moon is going to be so much about achieving our goals, accomplishment, really going after and solidifying the physical goals and things that we want in life. It's going to feel very big and expansive and beneficial. Like we're making big moves or closing huge chapters or realizing even really big things. But this is a really abundant energy, but it's also a very like full throttle energy at the same time in other areas and a very risky energy in other areas. And so this is a full moon that you definitely want to pay attention to. You want to see what's coming up in your life right now because there can be a lot of unexpected, uh, surprising situations happening, but also a lot of really grounding, positive situations happening as well. And so let's get into it. So as always, as always, let's start here. What the fuck is a full moon? A full moon is basically when the moon and the sun are in opposite signs, opposite zodiac signs in the sky, right? With the earth in the middle. So they're basically on opposite ends of the earth from our perspective. And so there can be an opposition or a revealing that happens. The moon is being lit up by the sun's light, which symbolically and metaphorically means that something is being seen that normally we can't see. Something is coming up. Something is being revealed. The shadow are being revealed, like subconscious habits, patterns, things uh, going on around us that maybe we couldn't see before are now being revealed as the full moon will light up the dark night sky. Also symbolically meaning lighting up the shadows, lighting up what we could not see before. So a full moon is a very revealing time. It also uh, starts waning. The moon starts waning after a full moon, which is why it deals with peak and heightened moments, heightened intuition, heightened emotions, but also endings or chapters kind of coming to a close or coming to a point where you're like, oh, I see things clearly now and now I can start moving on, right? So that's kind of the energy that full moons bring. They do bring an amplified energy in terms of your emotions, in terms of your feelings. So feelings and emotions can be really heightened at this time. Not so much with this particular full moon though, I would say. I mean, somewhat, right? Because we are in cancer season, but the moon itself is in Capricorn. So that means that we are going to be going about our feelings, going about our emotions, going about our instincts, going about, you know, our habits in a very grounded, practical, realistic sense, right? So Capricorn is an earth sign. It's a cardinal earth sign. It is the builder of the zodiac. It is about building solid and structural foundations to land upon. It is about taking things seriously, being more realistic, being more practical, and it is concerned with the physical element of earth, therefore very grounded, like I've been saying, but also the 3D realm, the physical realm, the things that you can smell, see, taste, and touch, you know, matter basically, right? And so this full moon, we may notice a lot of those themes coming up where we are, a lot of our focus or our feelings or a lot of the events that are going on, maybe a around a lot of physicality, like physical things within our lives, like a new house or a new car or, um, you know, closing on a house or 
you know, getting back in touch with our goals, our long-term goals, our long-term achievements, the things that we want to achieve long-term and create in this physical reality, right? Things that we want to bring into this physical reality. So this is a time where we could be closing a chapter on things that we've already been creating or where we begin to really reflect and see our bigger goals and how we can achieve them or we're closing a chapter or, you know, ending something that we've already been working on to do with something physical, right? So that is a lot of what this full moon is going to be about. You know, the moon in Capricorn isn't as emotional, but with the sun and Mercury traveling through Cancer, there's still going to be that sense of emotion, but we're going to be looking at how to ground that emotion in the physical world, in the physical reality, like how to manifest in the 3D with our emotions, our internal and our external worlds, and if they match, right? What needs to be cleared away in our physical reality that is not matching our internal reality or vice versa? How can we actually do something with the feelings that we feel? How can we actually have tangible results. Like this is about tangible results right now, right? It's like we can sit here and feel all day, right? Or be in a mood all day, but are we creating tangible, solid, practical results that are going to stand the test of time, right? You could also notice cycles closing that maybe started back in like the end of December of 2022 or early January this year, right? When we had the Capricorn new moon. So um, there could be some things coming up from around that time that you are closing a chapter on. That is just the basics of this full moon. Now, the reason that this particular full moon is very powerful and such a big deal is number one, the more positive aspect of it is that it is going to be in a trine with Jupiter. And so Jupiter is the most benefic planet in astrology and Jupiter is in Taurus, another earth sign, sign of abundance and fulfillment and pleasure, priorities and simplicity and value and worth, right? Really grounding in the beauty of earth and matter. Whereas Capricorn is more so like, okay, how do we get shit started? And getting shit started can sometimes be difficult and therefore it can sometimes take structure and discipline and being realistic and practical, right? So, but it's like whatever we've been working on or something that we had started, a very practical goal or a very tangible goal or something tangible that we've been working on, it's like we're seeing it from a higher perspective now. We're able to see it from a place of beauty, from a place of optimism, from a place of abundance, from a place of fulfillment. You know, maybe we're finally feeling success or we're finally seeing uh, signs of success with this full moon or signs of results uh, with this full moon. So that is the beautiful thing about this, right? Like it's like we are creating expansive, tangible results. We're feeling maybe in alignment with our goals. We're feeling in alignment with what we want, or we're getting back into alignment with what we want and our goals and, you know, creating tangible things in this reality. Now, the issue with this particular full moon though, and it's not necessarily an issue. It may not be an issue for everybody, but some people may notice the more challenging side of this. Other people may notice the more positive attributes of this, but what we have is Venus in Leo squaring Uranus right around this full moon. So this is a very risky roll the dice kind of aspect, especially when it comes to love, relationships, money, and friendships, right? And so what we can notice is a lot of impulsivity with this, a lot of random, unexpected, or surprising situations that come up. It's like, whoa, this is out of nowhere. I did not see this coming, right? So some people could notice that. Other people could notice this general sense of excitement and enjoyment about a particular relationship or about a particular situation involving others or involving something that you desire. It's like we're feeling really lit up and we're feeling very like, like electric and uh, maybe even like turned on, you know, um, and confident about something. And it just feels really liberating, right? This also, this aspect can also speak to liberating ourselves uh, through facing fears about accomplishing or going after certain things that we desire or certain things that we want, getting very innovative about the things that we desire and the things that we want, you know? This full moon is also a lot about seeing how much we've matured in certain areas of our lives. And with that being said, there could be something risky that gets brought up or something tempting you know, like something that comes up that's unexpected, that kind of challenges us to kind of resort back to like old behavior or immaturity or something like that. And we have to 
make kind of the adult, the responsible, the serious, practical, realistic, you know, disciplined kind of decision, right? And so with that, you know, this full moon could be showing us like, damn, look how much you've matured, you know? I mean, for some people, there might not be like a tempting or risky situation that comes up, but for some people it may, you know, like a curveball could come up and really challenge us to see like, okay, am I going to react to this in the way that I used to? Or am I going to go about this in the way that I would have before, you know, or maybe I'm going to handle this differently. This is like, you know, being, uh, being around people and getting invited to like some party, you know, and it's like, and you just know, like, you know, maybe it's just the people that are inviting you, or maybe it's just the place that you'd be going, you know, like an old environment or something. And it's like, it sounds fun and it sounds exciting, but like at the end of the day, like, you know, are you going to be neglecting your responsibilities to do this? Are you going to be, is it really going to add to your future or who you're trying to become? Um, and how are you going to respond? You know, is it, if you're in a relationship, how does your partner feel about that? You know, it's like, we can not think about these things in the moment, but there could be a situation that comes up that, that kind of tests us, that tests our commitments, that tests our relationships, that tests our, you know, values, that tests our sense of self-worth where, you know, we end up kind of in the end with this Capricorn full moon, really seeing like how much we've matured or how we need to, you know, realign with our commitments and our responsibilities and, you know, our maturity and all of that and uh, how that's going to move us forward. So that could be something else that could be a tempting situation or a situation where you're just like, yeah, that's crazy. I don't want any part of that anymore. Like I moved on. I'm in a different place. You know, it's just like you're seeing the changes within your relationships, within yourself, within what you're attracted to, within what you desire, within what you want and how that makes you feel like, damn, I've come a long fucking way. Like I've matured, like look at me go, you know, like, and there's just this like appreciation that can come in with that, with this full moon. We've already been having similar themes to this though in the last couple of weeks because Mars in Leo, which is right near Venus, was first squaring Uranus. And so that was about facing a lot of fear, overcoming a lot of uh, <laughs> challenge, you know, liberating ourselves through having courage, maybe making impulse decisions or impulse actions and moves to overcome something. So with Venus though, it is going to be a little bit softer because Venus is a feminine planet and deals more with the pleasurable feel good sides of things but this is going to be still nonetheless something that we do want to watch for especially in relationships with other people okay so this could be unexpected challenges that arise that throw us off but this could also lead to unexpected breakthroughs in relationships so it's like if things have been feeling stagnant <laughs> this can sure shake things up for you you know this can be an excellent time to experience breakthroughs and liberations from old problems and relationships. This can be an excellent time to revisit your values and relationships, what you really desire in your life, whether with relationships or just for yourself, you know, whether you're in a relationship or not. And if you're really in alignment with those desires and what is holding you back from that, right? And so these are some of the things that we can really also see come up around this full moon. So this is a very exciting energy, but it can also lead to some challenges, some unexpected upheavals, right? Because it's like, we want the beauty, we want the simplicity, we want the stability and the security, but we also want the fun and the aliveness and the play and, you know, the that lit up kind of empowering feeling, right? And so this can also be a very empowering transit for us where it's like we kind of step into our power, you know? We kind of step into this powerful energy and liberate ourselves and learn to be authentic in what we want and what we desire and with other people. So that can also be a really big theme of this Venus-Uranus square. So with that being said, though, this full moon definitely speaks to getting back aligned with our goals and where we're going on a tangible earthly physical level where we're at what needs to be done that maybe we've been avoiding because this is Saturn sign after all the moon is in Saturn sign of Capricorn so this is very much about getting grounded again in reality and discipline and responsibilities and things that we want to achieve um, so we can kind of you know, do the work or get back in line with the steps that we need or see the missing piece, the missing link, you know, to really fulfill those long-term goals, those long-term desires, the things that are going to expand us long-term while also stepping into 
you know, this next level version of who we are and who we desire to be or this next level version of our relationships or our friendships or, um, you know, uh, you know, like our our community or financially, you know, Venus rules money too. So for some people, this could be like a financial up leveling, but it may require you to have some courage and face some fear at first, right? So what's really also interesting about this is that, you know, the ruler of this full moon in Capricorn, Saturn, is in Pisces, right? So this could also bring in the Piscean theme as well with this full moon. We could see that like, you know, maybe there is some kind of payoff happening for us trusting even though we were confused or even though it didn't quite make sense or even though we weren't all the way sure, right? There could be some kind of uh, payoff or some kind of success that finally happens because it's like we trusted and, you know, we're also reflecting on our goals and on our sense of trusting in something bigger and on our sense of being responsible while still being trusting, right? While still believing in something bigger than ourselves. And so that's also really coming up around this time. I have no idea what the hell I just said. I'm sorry. I just realized like, I don't know if I was just channeling for a minute or what, but like I wasn't even paying attention to what I was saying. <laughs> there for a minute that happens sometimes but uh yeah so this full moon is basically bringing in certain missing pieces that we've gotten out of touch with about really solidifying and grounding our physical tangible reality and foundation whether it's for a goal whether it's in a job whether it's a project we're working on it's really about getting back to reality and practicality while also still being able to trust in the future or trust in something higher or have belief and faith in whatever it is you're doing and seeing the positive results of that. So that is really what I think this full moon is going to be about for all of us. Let me know down below if this resonated with you. Uh, and if you watch this whole intro, comment the word badass down below. I appreciate you. And we are going to get on to the rising signs. Again, just going to be very short and brief, but um, the July horoscope will be coming out very soon so you will have more info on everything i love you guys let's get into Alrighty, it already capricorn starting with you this full moon is in your first house so full moons in your first really kind of just bring you back to yourself they remind you of who the fuck you are basically it's like oh yeah that's right i forgot like i am a total badass like duh you know like it it really is a time of getting back to your inner sense of yourself and making sense of what's been going on inside of you maybe certain things about yourself or your personality or your body at times that you've been neglecting so it is kind of gonna feel like this this kind of reminder of like oh yeah this is who I am could also be exposing or revealing certain patterns or habits that you have um, and certain things about yourself and your relationships with other people or your significant other as well could be coming up here. Could be also a time where you are exploring new environments or speaking up for yourself or going on a short trip for yourself. You know, something like this could be very prevalent around this time for you as well. And this Venus Uranus square for you is happening in your eighth and your uh, fifth house. So this is definitely going to be a time where something really exciting, but also nerve wracking and scary could be kind of happening in terms of something that you love, a passion project or a talent or uh, something that you're doing to have fun, um, something that you do for pleasure, maybe dating um, or children. It's like, <clears throat> something that you've been doing there is getting, it's like you're getting a major breakthrough or there's something kind of unexpected happening financially here or you're facing some kind of fear here financially with the things that you love, with your heart's desires. And so I would say that if you're dating anyone or if you're in a relationship, maybe your romantic life could be shaken up a little bit. This could be definitely a time to uh, kind of find that spark again with your partner, you know, like, uh, you know, maybe a focus on your sex life or your your dating life or something like that could come up and, you know, having more fun, pleasure and play, or you could be really thinking about making like a risky investment in something that you love. That's going to bring you more pleasure. Something like that could also be the case too. So let me know down below though, Capricorn, if any of that sounds like it's true for you or is going to resonate for you. If you're already noticing some of these themes coming up 
And with that being said, we're going to move on to Aquarius. So Aquarius, this full moon for you is happening in your 12th house. So this is kind of your hidden house. It's in your subconscious. It's behind the scenes, you know? So it really is probably bringing up some habits, patterns, cycles, or behaviors like old self-sabotaging behaviors um, that you're needing to face, you know, that are kind of keeping you out of feeling healthy or feeling well or getting things done in your day-to-day -day life. could also be a time where you're going to need more rest or where you are wanting to kind of get away or pull back uh, for a brief period to reassess some things or to work on some things behind the scenes. Uh, that could also be the case too. It's a very subconscious uh, full moon for you where there could be a lot coming up subconsciously or in your dreams or, you know, your behind the scenes life, things that you've been avoiding that it's like, okay, if I fix these things, if I secure these things and work on these things, then I can reach my goals in terms of my home, my family, my, my foundation, right? My personal life. It's like, how are your inner habits or how are your, you know, like kind of, um, cycles or patterns or habits or addictions affecting, um, what you want long-term or your long-term goals and vision for your home, your family, your foundation, and what you want in your personal life. Like something like that could also come up. But it's like if you've already been working on some of these things, you're going to really see the payoff. You're going to really see tangible results and successes starting to form. So with that being said, though, Venus and Uranus are squaring, and this is your fourth and seventh house. So there could be uh, something that gets kind of shaken up or something unexpected that kind of comes in in terms of your relationship or your friendships and your relationships with other people and the kind of attention and presence that you're wanting there versus um, your home, family, and personal life. So this could be like a partner has been really wanting your attention or you've been really wanting, desiring a partner's attention or presence and somehow it is... Um, causing a major breakthrough with like your home and family or your past or your personal life or what your private life or how you feel privately or what you've been doing privately. Um, this could also be like maybe a partner or a friend kind of acts out unexpectedly and this causes some kind of shake up in your home and family or maybe family member and a partner or something like that. But either way, it's like something is happening here to do with your relationships with other people, potentially a breakthrough or potentially something getting a little bit shaken up or some turbulence happening um, in terms of your relationships and your home, family, and personal life. So let me know though what happens down below. I'd really, really love uh, to hear your feedback <laughs> and what you're noticing come up right now with these transits. So anyways, Aquarius, thank you guys so, so much for watching. Make sure to comment down below and let me know what's going on with you. And we are going to move on to Pisces. So for Pisces, this full moon is happening in your 11th house of your friendships, your network, other people, groups of people, etc. So you could notice a lot of those themes coming up. Uh, it could be, you know, just different friends, different acquaintances, marketing, networking, you know, getting back in touch with this area of your life and uh, what you really, you know, what you really want to secure here as well, you know? And so this could also be like, maybe you've been creating something or learning something new or using your skills in some way, and you've been really wanting to put them out there or you have been putting them out there. And it's like, you finally start to see some kind of payoff or some kind of success, or maybe you're going on a short trip with some friends or something like that to like actually create some kind of tangible result in your life, you know? So things like that could be happening for you. Let me know down below what it is though, because I'm curious. And then also Venus and Leo in your sixth house is going to be squaring Uranus in your fifth, or I'm sorry, not fifth house, <laughs> Uranus and Taurus in your third house. And so this is definitely could bring up some relationships with coworkers or at work or some desires that you have or that you've been working on with your work life, with your day-to-day -day routines, with your health, and maybe some breakthroughs that happen here to do with your environment, to do with friends, to do with uh, situations, people, places, and things that you're around. So I could really see this being like, you know, you're at work and something just pops off or something dramatic kind of happens and you're just like in the wrong place or the, at the wrong time or you go out with some coworkers or some friends and then 
you know, like one of them is being very impulsive or there's some kind of risky decision that comes up, or maybe you're thinking about uh, relocating in terms of your job or your work or something like that. So either way, those are kind of some of the themes and some of the examples you can notice. Um, you could also just be feeling a lot of creative breakthroughs when it comes to your job and when it comes to your day-to-day -day work and like being excited about that or announcing that in some way, you know? And so let me know down below though, what you are noticing coming up in your life, Pisces. I would really, really love to hear your feedback as always. And we are going to move on to Aries. So for Aries, this full moon is happening in your 10th house of your career, your long-term goals, your public image, the legacy you want to leave behind, and what you want your future to look like, the future that you're building. And so you're really getting back into alignment with these things like, okay, I need to build a solid structural foundation for my future. And if you've already been working on these things, um, then you know there's going to be a lot of accomplishment and just feeling like really accomplished and successful coming up for you at this full moon. You know, this full moon's training Jupiter in your second so it's like whatever you're doing in your career is really like coming under the spotlight with this full moon and it's adding to your success financially, wealth wise and resource wise. It's like, wow, like I really have what it takes to do this or whatever I'm doing is paying off, you know, quite literally, possibly for a lot of you as Aries, like this could be a really great promotion, pay pay increase, you know, something like that, a new source of income, a business that you're starting to finally get some success on, you know, something like this is really coming up at this time for you as an Aries rising. Now, the other big thing happening with this full moon is Venus square Uranus. So Venus is in your fifth house of children, pay, play, passion, fun, dating, romance, sexuality, entertainment. And so those are some of the themes you could be noticing come up, but there could be some shakeups financially with this. It's like, you know, you're trying to uh, up level for something that you really want, something that your heart really wants, and you're trying to up level financially. And this full moon is definitely helping with that. But there may be some fears that you need to face, or there may be some changes that you need to make, or there may be some things you need to like break free from to do this. Um, this could also bring up some unexpected uh, risk or some unexpected surprises in terms of your dating and romantic life and finances or money. So watch out for that too. But let me know down below if you're an Aries rising, uh, what you do see coming up and if you see any of these topics or even situations coming up because I would really love uh, to hear your feedback and you know what you are noticing come up with this because it looks pretty interesting. So thank you for watching Aries. Uh, make sure to comment down below and give me your feedback and and we are moving on to Taurus. So for Taurus, this full moon is happening in your ninth house. If my chart would freaking move, I don't know why it's being so slow right now. Um, so this full moon's happening in your ninth house of higher learning, travel, um, you know, education, getting out of your comfort zone things like that. So your belief systems, your worldviews. So you could really notice a lot of those topics coming up with this full moon. Um, it could be revealing something to you about this as well, or you could be just noticing these themes come up in some way. It could be a time where you're traveling or where you're um, learning something new or going, you know, if you've, if you've already been doing some of these things, it could be a time of closure where you're closing a chapter in some way related to these things. But also on this full moon, Venus and Leo in your fourth house is squaring your Honest in your first house. And so as much as you're feeling very accomplished and optimistic about your potential moving forward and your future and what you're learning or what you're discovering in life, there's also this sense of maybe some fear or maybe some, uh, some potentially excitement as well happening or nervousness happening uh, within yourself about your home and family life or about certain relationships or dynamics within your home and family life. You know, it's like you are, you know, trying to be brave and liberate yourself from something, but you're also maybe trying to, um, keep the peace, but maybe there's some dramatic things going on with your family or home life or some surprising or unexpected situations that come up um, that really could cause a lot of breakthroughs for you though, or breakthroughs for you and your family, you know, but it's definitely some nerve wracking energy um, or some nervousness potentially, or just excitement. It could play out either way, or maybe you're kind of taking a risk, you know, um, in some way. So let me know down below, Taurus, what you are noticing come up. If you're noticing any of these themes coming up, I would really, really Love to hear what you're noticing and hear your feedback. It would mean a lot to me. And with that being said, we're going to move on to 
Gemini. So for Gemini, this full moon is happening in your eighth house of other people's money and resources, the taboo, the occult, you know, big life changes happening. So this full moon could really be shining a light on your financial situation, on your investments, building wealth, debt, taxes, uh, money that you share with other people or borrow from other people or institutions or money that's owed to you. And so this could be a great time where it's like something that's been owed to you finally happens. It's like you finally get something that's been owed to you or money that's been owed to you or a possession that's been owed to you or an inheritance or it's like something that has felt like maybe it's been taking a while, you know, finally kind of comes full circle. This could also be a major time where you're diving into like mysterious things or occult or taboo like things because the full moon is trining Jupiter in your 12th. So you could definitely be expanding your knowledge around certain pursuits that maybe other people are so like maybe other people shy away from to some extent, right? Or maybe are a little bit more hidden or taboo in some way. So we also have Venus in your third house, squaring Uranus in your 12th house. So this could be causing some nervousness or some sleeplessness lately for you as a Gemini rising, uh, especially in terms of things related to the past, maybe self-sabotaging behaviors or you trying to kind of break free from something going on in your environment or, uh, you know, there, maybe you've been feeling very creative or working on a lot of different creative pursuits in your day-to-day -day life, day-to-day -day environment, people, places, and things around you, um, but maybe it's causing some fear or some nervousness that you're really having to face or break through. You know, this could cause um, a nice breakthrough in terms of your environment, in terms of the, again, the people, places, and things around you, and maybe some things that have been hidden or some subconscious things that have been, you know, kind of haunting you in some way. Or, um, you know, maybe you want to kind of break free and, and just kind of be free for a little bit, experience some freedom from all of the busyness in your day-to-day -day life. But, you know, you have maybe obligations or commitments that are kind of keeping you um, to keep focusing on your day-to-day -day reality. So, um, but those are some of the things you can not notice coming up as a Gemini rising. Let me know though, Gemini, down below what you are seeing come up. If you're seeing any of these themes come up, I would really, really love to hear your feedback. It would mean a lot to me. And with that being said, we're going to move on to Cancer rising. So for Cancer Risings, this full moon is in your seventh house of relationships and partnerships and commitment. So the close significant relationships in your life are going to be highlighted with this full moon. You're going to notice a lot coming up with this, with relationships, maybe some things being revealed to you about your habits and relationships or about other people in your life. Now with this as well, this could also be positively affecting your long-term aspirations, your social group, your social life, your networking, you know, um, and your allies and just the people in your life, your friends. And so it's like something is being revealed to you on a very expansive level about maybe a business partner or long-term goals that you have inside of close committed relationships and, and how they fit into your social life right now. So with that being said as well, Venus is in Leo in your second, squaring Uranus in your 11th for this full moon. So there could also be though some risk that you're taking with some of this. So let's say that you are seriously thinking about having a business partner or going after some kind of long-term goal or aspiration with a friend group or with a person, the partner. Um, this could also be you taking some financial risk, you know, you shaking things up financially, or you having a, a, a breakthrough financially as well, or with your priorities or uh, with your resources, you know, taking a risk here, kind of rolling the dice. Um, on your long-term aspirations or your long-term goals or other people or a friend or friend groups or something like that. So something like that could really be coming up at this time, but let me know down below, Cancer, what you are noticing come up. I would really, really love to hear your feedback and love to hear uh, what's coming up for you around this time and if any of that resonates with you. So moving on to Leo rising. So for Leo risings, this full moon is happening in your sixth house of work, health, and day-to-day -day routines. So this is about getting mother effing structured in your day-to-day -day life, Leo risings, my fellow Leo risings. Um, we've been kind of maybe feeling a little lost <laughs> with it being cancer season. And we've been so busy in Gemini season, just connecting and networking and hanging out with friends and doing fun, lighthearted stuff, you know, but now it's time to get down to business. Basically, that's what this full moon in Capricorn is reminding us. Like it's time to structure your day-to-day -day life, your schedule, 
whatever it is that you're doing, get really clear on your goals here and, and, and how you're accomplishing those goals on a day-to-day basis and how they are leading to your future, right? It's like getting very clear on the simple practical steps that you need to start taking again to really get to your future and success and success in your job, your career, your long-term goals, things like this, right? And this can be a really expansive time for that where you can start seeing things very clearly and laying things out very simple, simply, where you start kind of seeing the layout and the structure of what needs to be done on a day-to-day basis or within your routines, within your diet, within your health for you to reach the heights and the potential that you want to reach in your life, right? For what you're feeling called to, your long-term vision, et cetera. Now, with this though, we are going to have some interesting shakeups with Venus in our first house, squaring Uranus in our 10th house, right? Um, also, by the way, this full moon is also bringing up certain habits, certain patterns that are also affecting us on a day-to-day level. Um, whoop. Sorry, there's just a bug crawling on me that scared me um, that are also affecting us on a day to day level um, when it comes to our career work and day to day routines and health. So that's another thing that could come up. But yeah, so Venus is squaring Uranus from our sign to uh, our 10th house in Taurus. So this could be a time where we are maybe taking some big risk, some big leaps of faith. Um, This could be a time where we are shaking things up or getting a lot more real or authentic about who we are and who we want to be in the world and our reputation. So we could be taking a risk here with this in some way, changing things up in terms of our brand and who we are um, or how we put our identity out there, how we show ourselves into the world, how we project ourselves. Um, And yeah, it's like a a time of really embracing that more like rebellious, like, um, kind (laughs) of Uranian energy of like, you know what, screw it. Like I'm going to liberate myself. I'm going to set myself free. Right. And so this could be a time where you really start, uh, seeing like how you can, um, change or how you want to change. Like you may start feeling this need or this desire to shift or change in terms of, who you are and how you present yourself to the world, you know? Now, one thing I will say about this as a Leo rising with this happening in our first house, this could be a strong desire or random urge, unexpected urge to change our appearance drastically or take a huge risk with our appearance, our looks, our body. And I would just say, if it's anything permanent, I would just say this. I'm not going to tell you not to do it because it's your life like you're, you're a big girl or boy or whatever, but like, I would just say that, uh, with this square, this is a challenge, you know, this is a little bit of a challenge. This is a little bit of tension. So you can do something risky and it can be like facing a fear and doing something risky and all that. But with Uranus, it's so unpredictable that like you, a lot of Uranian transits, when you kind of make a very permanent decision on a Uranian transit can kind of come back to bite you. It's like you're rolling the dice, but then the dice changes, you know? Um, And so it's like, oh, this didn't turn out how I thought it was, you know? Like, so it doesn't mean that you can't face fears and put yourself out there and be authentic. Like, um, but I would just say if you're going to do anything permanent, that is a really, really huge risk that you could end up regretting a lot. Um, like changing, you know, like cutting off all your hair, going bald or like, you know, doing something permanent to yourself or your appearance. I would say this is probably not the, the time. I mean, the transit can do that. Like it can make you feel that way, but like, I would just say to just keep, like, if you're accepting of all possibilities of how it could turn out, great, go for it. Um, Don't let fear hold you back. Don't let me hold you back. I'm just saying, you know, just be prepared because things can result in unpredictable results, basically. Uh, So, yeah, but this could also be another thing I want to say with this is this could also be a time where you have the urge to do something else very risky or behave in a very risky, provocative uh, manner in which you normally wouldn't. And so, and that can be great as well if it feels liberating and freeing. But again, um, if you have certain behaviors that end up being, you know, just, just, I would say to be, try to also be a little bit considerate of other people. And again, if you feel like you may regret something later, then this may not be the time to go full throttle with it, right? And so um, I'm not saying to live by your regrets, okay? I know there's other sides of looking at it, and it really just depends on your situation. I'm just trying to give you all angles here because this these transits can be crazy. These Uranian transits can be crazy, man. People can just up and like, you know what? I'm freaking moving across the world, or you know what? I'm gonna leave my relationship for this other person I just met, you know? Like it can be like just really random, unexpected surprise stuff 
uh, that we're not really thinking about in the moment because just because it feels exciting and freeing and like, yes, but this is a time to spice up who we are, our life and to, to, you know, lean into that excitement. But I would just say to also still, uh, think about all options here, right? So anyways, moving on. Thank you, Leo. Let me know down below if this resonates or what, what you end up seeing happening so we can compare notes because I really would like to know how you guys end up seeing this come up in your own life. But moving on to Virgo rising. So for Virgo risings, this full moon is happening in your fifth house of your children, pleasure, play, romance, dating, the things that your heart's desire or the things that your heart desires, the things that are fun for you, sexuality, things like that. So with this full moon here, it's like you're reconnecting with those themes in your life and they're bringing you a lot of expansion um, with Jupiter trining this full moon in your ninth. So maybe you're learning, you're going on a new learning pursuit that you know, is really kind of fulfilling you internally, fulfilling your heart, fulfilling your desire. It's like really something that you're loving or liking or just getting a lot out of, you know. So there could be something new that you're learning or you could just feel like, you know, just a lot of really positive, optimistic energy. There could be certain things coming up about your children and maybe travel or something like that. And then also for Virgo risings, Venus in your 12th is squaring Uranus in your 9th. So this could also be a time where you are learning a lot about yourself behind the scenes, parts of yourself that you may hide and how to start really integrating and embracing parts of, you know, those parts of yourself um, and how they may be shaking up certain belief systems or worldviews that you've previously had. This could also be where you are traveling or taking a risk on going a certain place or traveling to a certain place. So that could also be the case as well, where you kind of see yourself, you know, leaving or there could be some kind of ending happening. Um, uh, there could be maybe a person that you unexpectedly meet that is normal, like, you know, from a different area or from a different place, something like that could be happening here. So let me know down below, Virgo, what you do see coming up. I would really, really appreciate it if you did. It really helps me to know if any of this makes freaking sense or is landing. So please let me know down below. And with that being said, we're going to move on to Libra. So for my lovely Libra risings, this full moon is happening in your fourth house of home, family, your foundation, your private life, your personal life, your past, your roots. So this is literally about your foundation, where you feel safe and solid. And if you don't have a sturdy foundation, then everything kind of crumbles, right? And so you're really seeing in your life, this full moon's really revealing to you in your life right now where there's cracks in your foundation. Um, but also the work that you've already done on this and how it is somehow contributing uh, to maybe financial success, wealth, business ventures, investments. You know, this would be a great time for getting into real estate or something like that. Or maybe you're realizing certain things about your home, property, land, personal life that are somehow relating to your financial and wealth life and the wealth that you're wanting to build. Okay, so this is a full moon that is really shining a light on your private life, maybe revealing some things, bringing up topics of your private life. Now, we also have Venus and Leo in your 11th house of networking, friends, um, you know, your social group, your social life, squaring Uranus in your eighth. So this is a risky time in terms of your friend and social group life and finances, right? So I would just be a little bit cautious or careful mixing business um, finances, you know, investments with friends and social groups or uh, your social life right now, just because it may be a little bit unpredictable doesn't mean that's going to turn out bad necessarily. But like, as long as you're aware that it's risky or a little bit unpredictable, and you're fine with that, then cool, you know. Um, but yeah, it could be that you're taking a kind of financial risk, or you're making a risky investment in a certain you know, project or something like that, right? Um, but you're really kind of looking at your long-term aspirations and what you desire there and how that is, you know, and then wanting to kind of have some kind of breakthrough there as well. So that is what I see for you, Libra. Let me know down below though, if any of that resonates, because I'd really love to know, help you get out and let me know. Uh, it would really mean a lot to me. And if it doesn't resonate, what do you notice coming up for this full moon? What topics are you noticing? What patterns are you noticing come up around this time? So with that being said, we're going to move on to Scorpio. So for Scorpio, this full moon is happening in your third house. So this is your environment, your day-to-day -day environment, people, places, and things. This is you, your 
day-to-day communications, your day-to-day ins and outs, running errands, things like that. So this could be a full moon that's coming up. That's where you're feeling very busy or you're working on a project or you're working on creative pursuits or you're visiting a lot of different places or doing a lot of different things. But it is somehow adding a lot of growth and optimism and uh, just beauty to your relationship life or to the significant relationships of your life. So this could be where you're going on different events with different relationships or different you know, significant people in your life or like your partner, you know, um, or, you know, certain friends that you have in some way. Um, so yeah, I, I just feel like there is something coming up here with communication, your environment, but it's also somehow really fulfilling your relationships, your significant relationships in life. Now we also have Venus and Leo in your 10th squaring Uranus and Taurus in your seventh. So this is definitely bringing up some potential shakeups in terms of what you want for your long-term future and goals and what you desire, taking risk on that, especially also in terms of your relationships and your significant relationships with other people, your partnership, your marriage, or just significant relationships in your life. And so it's like you want, you know, you have this desire for something long-term in your life for these certain goals, for this certain direction that you feel is really good for you or just that is adding a lot of confidence and fire and passion into your life, but maybe it is causing some kind of shakeup or unpredictability in your relationships or in a relationship with other people. Maybe it's going to involve taking a risk or facing a fear, you know, or you're not sure how someone's going to react to something that you're desiring to do. So something like that could come up as well. Um, or it could just be like you're planning long-term goals with your partner and it's like a little unpredictable and risky, but exciting, you know, like, so let me know down below though, Scorpio, what you are noticing come up. If you're noticing any of these themes come up for this full moon, I would really, really, really appreciate your feedback. It would mean a lot to me. And with that being said, we're going to move on to Sagittarius last but not least. So Sagittarius, this full moon for you is happening in your second house of income, money, finances, priorities, what you have, (laughs) what you own, right? And so this is going to be a huge topic for you, you know, having that solid, secure, stable, practical, realistic foundation in terms of your money, your finances, your resources. Um, And then also how that is contributing um, or being contributed to by your day-to-day job and the things that you've been doing on a day-to-day basis that are just really fulfilling you or your health, you know, also your health and wellness and your routines, right? And so there's a really positive connection here between your day-to-day work or whatever you've been working on on a day-to-day basis, your job or your health and day-to-day routines and your money, finances, and resources, like what you have, what you own. And so there's just a really positive connection here where you could be feeling very accomplished or rewarded for your work and the work that you've been putting in and the presence and time that you've been putting into something. But also on this full moon, we're going to have Venus and Leo um, in your ninth house, squaring Uranus and Taurus in your sixth house. And so this could also be bringing up though some unpredictability or some risk that you're taking in terms of maybe traveling for work or wanting to travel for work um, or, you know, maybe learning a new topic or going back to school for something or, you know, switching your major or something like that. And it's bringing up some unpredictability with your day-to-day life, your work, job, and routine, you know? And so something like that could be coming up at this time. So let me know down below though, Sagittarius, what it is, what you do see coming up, if any of these themes you're noticing or if any of this resonates I would really really mean a lot to me to hear your feedback and thank you guys so so much for watching that is the end of this video I will see you in the next one